love us with an everlasting love. And he has left us here another day. And we're not just here accidentally, but God has left us here for a purpose. And that's to take up what Jesus has brought us. And know that God is God. Jesus is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. God has given us Jesus. He's given us his Holy Spirit. He's given the Holy Spirit to the church. And he's given Jesus to the world. And he's waiting on us to get it together. And to know that he's our God. God is good to us, and he's good all the time. In the morning, he's good. In the evening, he's good. He's our father, and he said he'll never leave us, and he'll never forsake us. So, as we pause this morning for a moment of prayer, to recognize, to realize, that God is God, and he's watching us. Man should always pray, and don't give up. Fathers, we come to the wrong room. And we come in Jesus' mighty name, the name which is above every name. We come giving you glory, thanks, and honor by being here and believing and receiving Ephesians 1, 18. That Father in heaven, the eyes of our understanding, being enlightened by you, each one of us know is the hope of your calling and the riches of your glory. We receive, O oh God, you strengthen us in our spirits today as your word go forth. Help us to think on your word, to meditate on your word, and let you be God in our lives. We love you and we thank you for loving us the way you love us. Thank you, Father, for being God. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Savior and our Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our teacher and our guide. These are many more blessings. We receive them all by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And amen. This morning, I want us to turn our Bibles to Mark, the little chapter. Like I said the other Sunday, it's a book or a chapter that is the mother of all faith and the whole body of Christ. I feel the members in the whole world need to be focusing on love and faith today because without love, faith won't work. The Bible tells us in Galatians that faith worketh by love. So we need to make sure that we're loving on God and loving on God's people. And as we turn our hours to Mark, the 11th chapter, there's so much in this chapter. People will say that I know with Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, and 25 says. But just more what it says it doesn't get you in research. We must become a doer of what it says. And so no matter how many times you hear Mark 11, it's a daily reading. It's revelation knowledge. Things to be revealed through this faith walk with God. In this life that we live in today, we have so many tests, so many trials. But it's so good to know that God promised that He would deliver us out of all of them if we just meditate and just think on what He has said to us. God loves us. God loves us with an everlasting love. In 1 John, the third chapter, He talks about what kind of love is this? What manner of love is this? What kind? That God can look beyond who I were and just see me for who Jesus is and love on me just like he loved Jesus. That's some love. Love looks beyond my faults and love sees my needs. And I thank him for that. And like I was saying in Mark the 11th chapter, I have quite a big scriptures that I have written down this morning. I want to break them down for just a little and all of them, Mark 11, 22 through 25, and Luke 10 and 19, 2 Timothy 3 and 12, Psalms 34, 11 through 14, and verse 19, Psalms 112, 7 through 8, James 1 and verse 22, John 6 and 63, John 10 and 10, and 2 Thessalonians 5 and 18. If we put all of them together for this week, we will have enough information to last us until next Sunday if we meditate on these scriptures all week long. But the Bible tells us in Joshua 1 and 8 to meditate day and night, and we will make our own way prosperous, and we will have good success. In this world that we're living in today, the tests, the trials, 
that the church is going through today, we are victorious over it. We are victors. But in order for us to see it, we must get on our duty as a soldier in the army of the Lord. Knowing that we have made the righteousness of God, who we are in Christ Jesus, and that we are more than conquerors. Remember this, as I go through these scriptures, God loves us. Someone loves us like God loves us. There is no way that God can put any kind of evil on us. He has no evil to give us. He's nothing but love. He loved me. He loved you. He loved the whole world. But the Bible said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loved us. And the thing that we need to do is to fall in love with God ourselves. And Jesus tells us in John 14, he said, if you love me, if you love me, you do what I ask you to do. You keep my commandments. And so this is a command from God this morning that he's ordered us in Mark 11 chapter to go to that chapter, build ourselves on faith, and know we have what we say. It's in our lives today, there are mountains that each one of us have. We know that COVID-19 is a mountain. It's a mountain that all of us are experiencing this day. But it's so good to know that praise moves mountains. The word moves mountains. The life of Jesus moves mountains. But those mountains will not move just by knowing. Those mountains will move just by saying I listened to a prophet last night, Brother Copeland, that's my prophet. And he said God had told him that this thing was going to be over sooner than he thought. But he didn't tell him how he knew that it was going to be done. But at the same time, he came back to him and talked to him and told him that the heat was going to burn out. And he asked everybody to start praying for heat, for the temperature to rise, so that all the symptoms of COVID-19 can be erased from this world. And so I'm asking you today, all of you that are listening to me, begin to believe and receive the heat that he talks about. And then I want us to go on down to Mark 11. I said Mark 11, but I want you to look at Mark 10, the 10th chapter Mark. Look at this, just just the 11th chapter in the 13th verse. And seeing a fig tree, this is talking about Jesus, seeing a fig tree, after having leaves, he came, if happened, that he may find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And the 14th verse said, And Jesus answered and said unto the it. Jesus answered the fig tree because the, the, tree, the fig tree was, he was wanting some food from the fig tree. And there were no food there. But so Jesus answered the fig tree and said, No man eat of thee hereafter and forever. That fig tree was Jesus' mountain. And the way he talked to his mountain is the same way we got to talk to ours. We got to let the mountain know that we are in control through my God. We have the power to talk to every mountain that it is. I don't know what mountain you may have in your life today. It might be a mountain of sickness. It might be a mountain of disease. It might be a mountain of pressure from the world, a mountain of worry. It might be a mountain of strife, bitterness, and resentment. It can be any kind of mountain. Satan can put things in our way. But we have already overcome whatever he put in our way. But we have to appropriate, we have to apply the word of God to get rid of the mountain. And so when Jesus talked to the fig tree, I said it was a mountain in his way. And this is the way he got rid of the mountain. He talked to it. And Peter was so excited the next day as they came back. And they seen when Jesus talked to that mountain that that fig tree had dried up from the root. Just because Jesus talked to it. Jesus tells us, I need you to do the same thing. So many times we're praying, but we're not speaking. God did not tell us to pray to him. He told us to say to the mountain. So many of us, we are saying to God, we're praying, God, please. No, he said, you talk to the mountain. I'm a whosoever, 
and you are a whosoever. And we, as whosoever, need to say what God told us to say. He told us, first of all, in the 27th verse, to have faith in God. And what he's saying, have, have faith. Like you would say, have a piece of candy. Have faith. Come on, have it, have it. Have faith in God. Get your faith developed. Every born again child of God has faith. Romans, the 12th chapter, the third verse say, it is been given to every man, he made your faith, those that come to Jesus. It's been given. God has given us a measure of his faith. But just because we have that faith doesn't mean that we're going to move mountains. Faith moves mountains when it's been applied with the word. Romans 5 says, faith access. It's a, it's, it opened the door for grace to come in. Faith has been given, but we must develop that faith, apply that faith each and every day of our life. No matter what your mountain is, apply what the word of God has said about that mountain. For example, like I always say, sickness and disease comes into the bodies. But you need to be a whosoever and say, whatever the sickness is, you must bow your name down to. You must bow your name down to the name of Jesus. You talk to your body. You tell your body what to do. And then you act upon it. Go further in acting upon by trying to take a step here to doing this or doing that, knowing that Jesus lives inside of you. Philippians, the second chapter, the 13th verse, it is God. It is God that worketh inside of me to do his will. But God cannot work inside of us until we speak. So back in Mark, the 11th chapter, it said, the 22nd verse said, have faith in God. And Jesus had faith in his words that he said because he said, I only say what the Father tells me to say, and I only do what he tells me to do. And so, like I said, Peter has gotten excited by seeing the fig tree wither up from the root. But Jesus saying, Peter, he tells Peter, have faith in God. And then in the 23rd verse, he said, now, verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever shall say to sickness, you whosoever now, whosoever shall say to lack, Whosoever shall say to COVID-19, whosoever shall say to depression, whosoever shall say to anxiety, whosoever shall say to whatever is going on wrong in your life, say something to it, this is what you say. Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. And then when you say that, don't doubt in your heart. Choose to believe what you have just got through saying yourself. Choose to believe that God's word is true. Choose to believe that I'm acting on God's word by saying what God has told me to say. Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. COVID-19 symptoms. Be thou removed. Cast into the sea. I do not doubt in my heart, but I believe that I have what I say. The 24th verse said, Therefore, I say, Therefore, I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have them. The thing that you desire is because you've been spending time with the Word, so you desire the Word of God to come to pass in your life. So believe that you receive what God can say. When you pray, believe that you receive, and he said you have what you say. Saying is very important to God. It's not about how much you know. It's about what you say. What are you saying every day? Matthew, the 12th chapter, he said, your words, your words you, you be judged for every idle word. He's not talking about the final judgment. He's talking about your words that you say each and every day of your life is going to bring things into judgment. Whether they be good or whether they be bad. So what you're saying every day, are you saying, Father, thank you for favor in my life. Thank you that I am healed. Thank you, Father, that I, I lack no good thing. Thank you, Master, that I'm the righteousness of you. Thank you, Father, that I'm the head and not the tail. Are you saying these things? Or are you going around saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh, I'm just sick. Oh, I'm just hurt.
room. I don't have this and I don't have this. Well, Romans, the eighth chapter said, if I've given you my son, I have given you all things. So if I've given you all things and all things are yours, then why do we say what we don't have? Instead of saying I have, I have everything. I'm just taking time. It's, it's taking me time to work this thing. It's taking me time as I meditate on the word of God to bring to head what God has already given me. God has given us all things. Then in the 25th verse, it said, when you stand praying, while you're talking to God, forgive. Forgive. If you have ought against any, so that your Father, which is in heaven, will forgive you for your trespasses. Well, we know that God has forgiven us for past, present, and future sins. But we need to confess our sins. If you got any ought in your heart, any resentment in your heart, if you've done anybody wrong, just go to the Father and say, Father, I was wrong. Now I repent and I receive my forgiveness that you have already forgiven me, but I receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. So today I'm telling you in Mark 11, all week long, talk to that mountain. Tell that mountain what to do. And God honor you because you honor his word. So as we leave Mark 11, I want you to go to Luke 10 and 19. In Luke 10 and 19, I'm giving you scriptures so all week long, you can go home and read these scriptures and know this is God talking to you. In Luke 10 and 19, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and of all the power they in it. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So what God is saying, I'm giving you power. That power operates in the name of Jesus. The seven to seven had just come back out from a journey. And this is what they said. They returned with joy, saying, Lord, even devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said, I seen Satan fall from heaven like lightning. So I'm giving you the same authority. The name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, that's ours. The word, we have it. And so we have an enemy out here in this world. But God has given us instructions in this book how to walk in victory over the enemy. We shouldn't be walking in no fear because fear is not of God. Fear is of the devil. When we walk in fear, we open the door for the devil. When we walk in faith, we open the door for God to walk in and do what needs to be manifest in our lives. And we know that when we say to mountain, the mountain will move. We know that we have the authority to talk to the mountain. Now over in 2 Timothy 3 and 12. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Good book. Good book to read. Good book to study. So many times we we'll, we'll say, well, I'm a child of God. I have no right to be going through this or going through that. But this is not what God told us. He said all of those, all of us who live God in life will suffer pers a persecution. He told us these things. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. 2 Timothy, I'm in mean 1 Timothy, but 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Yea, and all that will live like godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So he's telling us to say this God in this world and we don't go through something down here. He's not out of God. The persecution will come. But when it comes, he's given us enough information. He's given us his word to overcome persecution. It's going to come. None of us are exempt. Nobody on this earth are exempt from persecution. Nobody is in a righteous holy life who is not exempt from persecution. We see what Paul said. Out of all the revelation that Paul had in his life, look at the persecution that he faced. Look at the things that he went through because of the word of God. And if you're a child of God, you can get ready. Persecution's coming. But I thank God as we turn over to Psalms 34. Persecution will come. You're not exempted. None of us are. Psalms 34 in the 11th verse. Well, I tell you, let's look at the 19th verse. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many of them, not, not some, not, not, not a few, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of all of them. We have God's guarantee. 
then if we follow the command, if we carry out the instruction from the manual, God will see us through. We will walk in total deliverance. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of not some of them, but all of them. And then he tells us, as we were talking in Mark, the 11th chapter about the mouth. Go back to the 11th verse of Psalms 34. He said, Come ye children, and listen unto me, and I will teach you to respect the Lord. What man is he that desires life and love many days, that he may see good? What, what man desires a long life and see good days? If you're going to see some good days, it's something that you're going to have to do with your mouth. He said in 13 verse, this is how you're going to do it. Keep your tongue from evil and your lip from speaking down. If you're going to see good days, he said, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking out. Then he said, apart from evil and do good. Seek peace. Pursue it. And then as you're doing, he said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayer. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous pray. And the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. He delivers us out of all our trouble. The Holy Spirit is so good. He lives on the inside of us. And he tells us what chapter, what verse to go to. Just like he instructed me to give you these chapters and verses this morning. And all you have to do is just go through them and say, I received this, Father. This is for me. And then in James. James 1 and 22. The book of James, Jesus' brother, 1 and 22. He talks about the word of God. He asks us not to be a hero of the word, but be a hero and a doer. But we know that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But what you hear, you must do. Because just to hear the word, and don't become a doer of the word, you're still in the same boat you were when you first heard the word. And James 1 and 22, he said, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Because if you just hear the word, and a dance and a praise ain't going to get it. You got to do the word. I mean, you got to apply the word to your everyday walk. If you're not willing to apply, then what good is to hear it? You must become a hearer and a doer of the word. Because if you just hear, you're just deceiving yourself. But you got to become a, a person that's going to speak the word. A person that's speaking to the mountain, speaking to finances, speaking to sickness, speaking to diseases, speaking to whatever mountain is in your life. You must apply. We must apply the word of God with our mouth every day of our life. John 6 and 63, he says, my word is spirit and my word is life. So since God's word is spirit, and since God's word is life, then may life not to death by the way. Under the death cycle, under the, the curse in Deuteronomy, the 28 chapters, under the 15 verse, he has a list of curses. And we know that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We, have to, we know that the law is not made for a righteous man. We know that grace ends the law. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law. Moses was given the law for Israel. But God has given grace to the church. Grace is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has done everything for us. We shouldn't be worried about what's going on <laughs> with COVID-19. We should be praising God because our victory is in Christ Jesus and we have Christ Jesus. We have him. We're not going to get him. We have him. My words are spirit. My words are life. In Proverbs, the fourth chapter, he tells us, my son, attend to my word. So when you're attending to the word, you're attending to life. When you're attending to whatever the devil is saying, you're attending to death. But he said, my son, attend to my word. I need you to incline your ears to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't want you to have to part from your eyes. Every day your eyes ought to be somewhere on God's word. But if mouth is in your life, that, that scripture that you're standing on for that mountain to move, you need to not let that depart from your eyes, but keep it in the midst of your heart. 
For my words are life, he said. Keep it in the midst of your heart. It's your medicine. You know, the doctor can give you some medicine to make you feel good, but there's no medicine like Jesus' medicine. There's no medicine there. Proverbs 4, chapter 20, verse, he said, my word is medicine in your crossroads. It's medicine. It's medicine that you take every day to stay strong. If you've been knocked down, get on the medicine of the word and get back up. My word is medicine to those that fat. It's health. It's health to your body. Then in John 10, he told us there's a thief in this world. There's a thief out here. And the enemy, he's coming to steal your words. When you hear what God has to say about your mountain, when you hear what God has to say about your circumstances, your situations in your life, the enemy will come and put people in your pathway to get you to say just what they're saying instead of you saying what God said. But John 10 and 10, he said, a thief came but to steal. Steal what? Can you steal a word? If you can steal a word, you can kill you. If he can steal the word, he can destroy you. He said the enemy came to steal, he came to kill, and he came to destroy. He didn't say he came to destroy and, and come to kill, and then he said he come to kill, then he come to steal. Not come to destroy and steal, because he can't destroy and he can't steal until he, he take the word from you. So the enemy came to steal the word. And once he steals that body strikes and heal from you, he can do what he wanted with you. So he said the enemy came to steal the word. So if he steal the word, he can steal your joy. He can steal your peace. Then he can kill you and he can destroy you. But if we lay hold to what God's word said in John 6 and 63, my word is spirit. My word is life. That means the devil can't kill Jesus. His word is life. But Jesus can destroy him from your life if you let him. And I'm not saying that he won't come back. He will, as long as we're in the world. But we all come to whatever we come back with because we have the word of God. And going through our circumstances in life, I want us to go to uh, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians in 5 and 18. 2 Thessalonians 5 and 18. We look at rejoicing. We look at joy. When we know we don't have any joy operating in our life, we know we don't have any strength. But when our joy <laughs> rises, then our strength comes because the joy of the Lord is our strength. I said when he comes, he comes to steal the word. So when he steal joy, he can take you down. And that's alone. First that's alone. I said second, but first that's alone, 5 and 18. He said, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He did not say for everything, but in everything. In everything, give thanks. Don't thank him for everything. I don't thank him for sickness. I don't thank him for diseases. I don't thank him for lack and poverty. I don't thank him for the strength of depression. But in the midst of what you're going through, he said, give thanks. You give thanks because you know God's bringing you through. In everything, not in some things, in, not for, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning who? Concerning you. So he's telling us to thank him. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be grateful to God for. And we shouldn't take it lightly. We know we say, I thank God for waking me this morning. I thank him for clothing me in my right mind. I thank him for food, for clothes. I thank him. I thank him for salvation. I thank him for everything. But I thank him for the Holy Spirit. My comforter, my standby, my helper, my intercessor, my guide, my teacher, the Holy Spirit. I thank Him so much for Him because through the day, as I meditate and as I think on God's Word and just let my mind think on what He said about nothing, I know within me that I'm going to be a revelation. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal things to me on these scriptures that I'm standing on. He's going to show me things. He's going to show you things. As you meditate this week on these scriptures that I'm giving you, he'll show you things. And John, he said, I'll show you things to come. I'll show you future events. We must get with him, though, and let him be God. Our words, your own words will kill you, and your own words will make you live. Proverbs said, life and death 
is in the power of the tongue. Not just life, but death is there too. Not just death, but life is there. You can take your tongue and speak life, or you can take your tongue and speak death. It's your choice. Your choice. As we look in James, the third chapter, we went to James, the first chapter, we must apply the word. Not just be a doer, a hero, but be a doer of the word. You can't just hear the word, but you must do the word. In the third chapter of James, good book, the third chapter, and he talks about in the sixth verse, and the tongue is a fact. Your tongue is a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our body parts, our numbers of the body. There's the fire of the whole body. And it sets on fire the course of nature. And it's set on fire of hell. Your tongue can deliver your body delivered from the word of God. Or your tongue can cause the courage to operate in your life, although you've been redeemed from it. Your tongue is a world of iniquity. Your tongue has not been born again. Your spirit has been born again. But that tongue, you can't control it by yourself. No man can tame the tongue by himself. But we're not by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit. And he's there, to, he's there to help us with this little thing in our mouth. God did not put this thing in our mouth just to say anything. He gave us a tongue to speak his word. And Luke, I think it's Luke 21, when he said, I've given you a mouth and I've given you wisdom. And why do you think he gave it to us? To use it. Wisdom is his word. And he gave us a mouth to speak. Isn't it amazing to you that the arm can't say nothing, the speak can't say nothing, the eye can't say nothing? Can that a voice, our tongue, our mouth is God's voice piece. And so he tells us in Luke, he said, I've given you. God is so good to us. I've given you a, a tongue. I've given you a mouth. Luke 21 and 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom. With all your adversaries shall not be able to, to gainsay nor resist. The devil cannot resist what God is saying. God has given us a mouth. He's given us a tongue to speak. And he said, the enemy cannot stand against what we're saying, what we're saying, what he said. So in James, the third chapter, in the sixth verse, he said, your own tongue can set your body parts on fire. Or your own tongue can get you healed by saying what God told you to say. He talked about our members. He said, among our members, it defiles the body. It messes up our body. And so many people, they, realize them, they don't realize what they're saying. You're saying in and everything. If that fig tree heard Jesus talking, your body hear you talking. That fig tree tuned down to the, the words that are coming out of Jesus' mouth. And whatever sickness or disease in your body will tune down to what your body is saying when you're saying what God can say. What, what your mouth is saying when you're saying what God can say. As we go on down, he said now, the ninth verse, there will bless we God, even the Father, and there will be cursed we men, which are made out of the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, he said, these things ought not to be See, one moment you're talking about the blessing, and you're talking about how good God is. One moment you're saying, he's my healer. You're saying, by stripes, I'm healed. One moment you're saying this about God. He, he made me the head, and he, he made me not the tail. But then the next moment, when you get around people, and you begin to hear what people say, and you say, mm-hmm, yeah, that's right. And the person just got up saying, I'm sick, yeah, that's right. There is no sickness in your spirit if you've been born again. Sickness coming into the body, but not the spirit. And your spirit is supposed to dominate your body. Paul said, crucify the flesh. How do you do it? With the words of your mouth. Coming out of your spirit. And that's why, oh, in Philippians, Paul said, Philippians 2 and the 13th verse, I've given, he said, well, is God that works in me? How is God going to work in you without you saying something? You couldn't even get born again without your mouth. In Romans, the 10th chapter, he talks about this. In Romans 10, it's so good. We are not under the law, we are under grace. But the 10th chapter of Romans, he said, 8 verse, 
But what shall is what but what does it say? But what says it? The word is not thee. The word is not thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now look what he said with the mouth. If you confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be delivered. Delivered from what? Delivered from hell. Delivered from sickness. Delivered from everything that's under the curse. If I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If I believe with my heart that God raised him from the dead. I shall be delivered. Because when we look at Jesus and see, why did he go to the cross? Why did he go to hell? And why did he get up? He went to the cross for you and me. He went to hell to take care of business, to take, to take the keys of death, hell, and the grave back from Satan. And he rose again for our victories. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, waiting on his enemies to be made his footstool by us. And we can't do it until we say something. I am victorious. I say this all the time. I am victorious. I am the head. I'm not the tail. I have the authority over the enemy. Satan must bow his knee to me now because I'm carrying the name of Jesus. It is not me, this is the Lord's card, but he's carrying, he must bow his name to me because I'm carrying Jesus' name. I have that name. God has given me that name. To them that believe in my name in Mark 16. They'll be able to cast Satan out. They'll be able to lay hands on the sick and they'll get healed. They'll be able to speak in tongues in their heavenly language. A language that God has provided for us to provide spirits. A language that when we're praying or talking in tongues that the devil don't know what we're saying. To strengthen us and build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God has given us, he has given us all kind of ammunition to work against the enemy. If we just do it, and we must do it with our mouth. So back to Mark 11 again, we need to have faith. We need to talk to that mountain. We need to tell that mountain where to go. And we must believe that we receive that we have what we say. And above all this, what I just said, you must forgive. Hold no, no, no off in your heart against nobody. Whatever it is, let it go. Because it's not worth. It's not worth the blessing that God has given us. It's not worth it. God is good, and he's good all the time. So I feel young. I want you to take these scriptures, Mark 11, 22 through 25, Luke 10 and 19, we have the authority. Second Timothy 3 and 12, the bottom of persecution of his coming, but remember that you are an overcome. Psalms 34, he shows us that our tongue will deliver us. Psalms 112, he said, we are established. I didn't get to that one today, but Psalms 112 talks about being established, me I'm settled. I'm settled on what God can say. Nothing else but what he can say. If God said, I believe it, and that's settled it. A lot, of, a lot of us, we strike out on doing things, but we're not settled, we're not established. But the way to get established that you spend time with God, and you build yourself up with God, and you know that God is God, and God's word will not fail. And the next one, that I gave was James 1 and 22. Don't just be a hero, but be a doer. Doer is that you are applying what God has said with your mouth every day. John 6 and 63, whatever you apply from what God's word has said, know that his word is spirit and his word is life. John 10 and 10, he said, I came to give you life. I didn't come to give you death. And 2 Thessalonians 5 and 18, not for everything, but in everything, rejoice. And Philippians 4 and, and uh, 4 and 6 said rejoice always. And again, I said rejoice, redo it over and over again. Once you get uh, the scripture on it and you see what the scripture is saying, you receive the scripture, put your joy clothes on. Let heaven know that you rejoice in Jesus. Rejoice in God and rejoice in the Holy Ghost. Be blessed today. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. And until we meet again, let God be God in your life. Amen.